Hey friends, if you're interested in learning who is eligible for an employment authorization document, watch this video. This is part three in a series that I'm doing on the work permit. If you haven't checked out parts one and two yet, go back, check them out. I'm going to link to them there. But before I get into it, as usual, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to share it with others. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and yeah, let's get into it. Now, adjustment of status, you guys are familiar with this one. Those of you who are here in the United States, that's the C9 category. You're eligible to apply for the work permit while your adjustment of status is pending, and you can renew it each year as so long as your I-485 application is pending. Then we have the category, the registry applicants based on continuous residence since January 1st, 1972. Other categories, these are smaller categories, uh, legalization, temporary resident pursuant to INA sections 245A or 210. That's another special category of a smaller one. N8 or N9 non-immigrants. Applicants for cancellation of removal, if you're in immigration court and in removal and you've applied for cancellation of removal, you're eligible to also have a work permit during the time that the judge is considering your application. Next, we have applicants for legalization pursuant to INA Section 210, again, another smaller category. Then we have applicants for legalization pursuant to INA Section 245I. And guys, you've got to work with a lawyer to determine if you're even eligible under any of these categories. Next, we have those who are on parole. Those with parole have to file the form I-765 with a copy of the form I-94, passport or other travel document showing you were paroled into the United States for urgent humanitarian reasons or reasons of significant public benefit pursuant to INA 212D5, such as the Cuban family and Haitian family reunification parole programs. Then we have individuals who receive deferred action and DACA, those who have are DACA recipients, they're eligible also for a work permit. Then we have the C-18 category for those with a final order of deportation of removal, but there's some very special things that you guys need to understand about this. Read the instructions very carefully. Work with your lawyer on this one. Then we have the life legalization applicants, the C-24 category, T-1 non-immigrant A-16 category. Then there's the T2, T3, T4, T5, or T6 category. Now the T category is a very special category for those who have been trafficked, who are victims of trafficking. Read the instructions very, very carefully here. T non-immigrant adjustment of status, C9 category, U1 non-immigrant immigrant visa holders. The U visa, as you guys may or may not know, is for those who are victims of a crime. Again, this is very particular, very complicated. Work with a lawyer to determine whether you are even eligible for the U visa. And also the U2, U3, U4, or U5 visa holders as well. Next, we have the U non-immigrant adjustment of status category. And then the VAWA self-petitioners, C31, those who are applying for a green card based on domestic violence. Then we have the A3 or G5 non-immigrant category, C14. And then lastly, there's the applicant for Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, long-term resident status, C37. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Share it with other people. Subscribe to this channel if you have not yet done so and hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first to get these videos each week. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.